Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, thanks for stopping by and if you're a returning subscriber, thanks for coming back to watch another video. It is so good to have you here with me again today. Right, so as you can tell from the title of today's video, it's going to be something a little bit different to the normal style of content that I do on my channel. Over the weekend, I had the pleasure of speaking at an event called Black Girl Finance Festival. I actually visited this event back in, what, 2020 it was? It was one of my first ever vlogs. In fact, I think it was the first ever vlog that I'd done on this channel where I shared that I was going to this festival and I went, it wasn't even a festival back then actually, it was an event that I went to back then called Black Girl Finance and it was called Let's Talk About Money. And I remember going there at the time, not knowing what to expect and being scared because it was the first time I'd ventured out to an event by myself and I thought let me vlog the experience. I'll probably insert a clip here from the last event that I went to because you can see like how awkward I was on camera and kind of a bit of a snippet of what the event was like back then. One person's jump is amazing event and I'm so glad I went so I'm just going to tell you guys a lot about what I took from the event what I liked about the event why I definitely think you should be at the next one and yeah we just need to level up in 2020 2020 I'm telling you it's the year to secure the bag it's the year to get our money up it's the year to just yeah get better manage our money better budget live a fruitful life on a frugal budget oh i like that's my apple that's my new strap line yeah but anyway that was in 2020 that i first attended that event and fast forward now to 2023 i had the privilege of actually speaking at the event to a festival with a lot more women so it was an incredible kind of 360 moment and it's like wow how did i end up here but definitely so grateful to selena for the opportunity to speak and grateful to her for putting on such a remarkable event because it was amazing Unfortunately guys, I had all the intentions in the world to vlog this event. I even mentioned in my coming back to YouTube video that I was going to be attending a couple of events which I wanted to vlog for you guys because it was really a good event and it would have been good to kind of share it with you. I did get some clips of the day which I will be inserting at different points during this video but unfortunately I wasn't able to like vlog the whole experience like I wanted to because the day just ran away with me and I just needed to prioritize getting there on time and all the other stuff just didn't happen. A little bit about Selena, the founder of Black Girl Finance Festival. So she actually wrote a book a couple of years ago called Black Girl Finance and it gives you everything you need to know about personal finance, the A to Z of personal finances, specifically targeted at a black audience, so a black female audience, which is obviously myself and maybe some of you that are watching. What I'll do is I'll share in the comment section below a link to the book. So if you wanna grab yourself a copy, I'll definitely recommend doing so I've read it I read it a couple of years ago and it was a brilliant book it's a very good ABC guide to personal finances if you're looking to get started and you're like I don't know where to start this book is going to help give you kind of a blueprint for you to follow so it's not sponsored what I'm saying here I'm just sharing because it is a really good book and yeah I think Selena is amazing so a little bit more about the event so Black Girl Finance Festival was held at the University of Westminster on Saturday the 11th of March and it was an all-day event so it started at 9 and finished at 5 p.m. I was able to attend from around lunchtime but they had some brilliant speakers in the morning which I unfortunately wasn't able to see or capture but what I'll do is I'll insert a few clips of the other speakers that I was able to capture later on in the afternoon after I done my talk. Absolutely phenomenal women all talking about different money topics so the day consisted of talks about budgeting, about saving, about paying off debt, about investing, about the property market. There was even a section on wills and power of attorney like it was literally everything you need to know about personal finance was covered in one way or another there was also a workshop on um getting into fintech so just a brilliant event and just so such a wealth of knowledge was shared in that room so i'm saying all of this you can't go it's already happened so it's a bit like oh thanks Tolly. nothing i can do with that right now but i'm telling you so that you can kind of follow black girl finance so it can be on your radar for the next event that they put on and i'm also sharing just so you can kind of see the events that are now taking place in london on the subject of personal finance because the information is out there and the events are being put on but you don't know what you don't know so i guess it's good to kind of share as and when these events come up what i will be doing in the future is obviously giving you a heads up and a notice so that if you do want to attend you can attend but it just goes to show that 
these events exist it's just up to us to find out about them and do our best to attend it was held on a saturday so you can imagine people giving up their whole saturday to come and learn about money but it was amazing it sold out and everybody in attendance was able to take so much away from the event so in total there was about 70 guests in attendance plus all the other speakers and stuff so you're talking close to 100 people in total attended the event throughout the day and it was just amazing it was such good vibes throughout the day like people were really kind really welcoming really open to the messages that the different speakers were sharing people were engaging asking questions sharing their experiences sharing their stories so it just was such an empowering experience like i can't explain it it's one of them ones that you kind of had to be there but hopefully in this video i can kind of share snippets of how amazing the day was to kind of show you what happened and i'm attending another event this saturday which i'm hoping to get a better vlog for you so definitely subscribe if you haven't yet subscribed and stay tuned for that video which will be coming out soon and yeah in that video hopefully i can document a lot more of the event so you can really see how powerful these events are but in terms of my contribution to the day i was able to give a talk on my debt stories if you haven't heard my debt story i'll link it in the description box below or link it up there but what i did on the day is i shared my debt story how we got into debt house we were subsequently able to achieve debt freedom and then after my talk there was a panel discussion the audience was so engaged they asked lots of questions and they gave a lot of positive feedback and positive input to the discussions we were having so it just was a really good experience where we were all able to kind of give and take and learn from each other on the day i had every intention to get there and vlog like i said but you know when everything that could go wrong goes wrong that is what was happening to me that morning so i wanted to get there about half 12 so that i could be there in time for the lunch time and have time to kind of settle and calm my nerves before going on stage my journey to get there was just a headache like the bus driver i don't understand what was going on but he was stopping like every two minutes to regulate the bus service and then he decided to terminate early and then my i just was feeling like crap so it was taking me ages to even walk to the destination so you know when you want to walk faster but your legs are just not moving in correlation to how you're trying to move if that makes sense it's probably a pregnancy thing but yeah i just couldn't get there as quick as i wanted to so i was just getting so frustrated on my journey there and by the time i got there it was just close to my time to go on stage so i was so flustered like i was just a mess <laughs> i was like oh my gosh what is going on with me so i'm there in the lift trying to give myself a little bit of a pep talk i'll include that link where you can see me just trying to talk myself down off the ledge like don't worry totally it's gonna be fine you're gonna be okay and then when i got there and i saw the room filled with all those people i was like oh my days what have i come to now sign up for but in the end it was all fine and when i finally started speaking after like a couple of minutes and the crowd laughed at one of my dead jokes i was like okay it's not too bad it's not too bad and we were able to kind of just flow with it i'll insert here a couple of clips that i managed to get from people from my talk speaking at events yeah it's one thing the idea of it the doing it is always so much harder is what I find so I'm like yeah I love to speak about my debt story I love to talk about personal finance you know encouraging people helping people transform their relationship with monies etc like I do love doing that doing it on YouTube where it's just me and my camera is a lot easier to do than doing it in front of a big crowd and people are just staring back at you it's just so intimidating and as much as I want to continue to do more of these events psyching myself up to do it. it it's it's a big task it's a really big ordeal but then once i finally start getting into it and doing it it's actually not as bad and i enjoy the experience i think that's why it's so important to just feel the fear and do it anyway like if there's something in you that you want to do just do it regardless of how you feel about it because 
when you do it, it's always so much better than what you feel like it's gonna be or what you fear it's gonna be. So yeah, even if you feel intimidated about stepping out of your comfort zone and trying new things, just do it because what you think it's gonna be is always 10 times worse than what it actually ends up being. Like as much as I did not sleep a wink the night before this event, it was worth it once I got up and actually was able to deliver my talk and then get all the feedback from the crowd afterwards. It's like, oh, actually, you've actually inspired me to start my debt-free story. You've inspired me to be open about talking to my partner about debt. You've inspired me to stop burying my head in the sand. Just having those little conversations afterwards with people just let me know it was worth it. That one night where I didn't sleep was actually worth it because I was able to have impact on all these people. And hopefully they actually follow through with it and it's not one of those things that you you know in the buzz of the moment you're like yeah, yeah yeah i'm gonna do something about it and then as soon as you leave the event you're like yeah i'm not doing anything about it because i did try and tell them like guys action is what you need to do because nothing changes if nothing changes but it's a lot easier said than done let that be an encouragement to you that if there's something in you that you want to do do not let fear stop you from doing it because if i did that I wouldn't have been able to deliver that message to those people on Saturday and then you just don't know what the knock-on effect of those conversations that we started on Saturday is going to be for those people so it's kind of selfish to really keep things to yourself when it can be a blessing to somebody else. Someone recently said something to me the other day which helped me calm my nerves for the event and it was that our thoughts are just stories that we tell ourselves so we can tell ourselves different stories and the answer or the outcome of that story can be very different so like me telling myself that oh, people are going to laugh at me or people are not going to take me seriously as I'm talking or I'm going to like my waters are going to break on the stage yes I actually had that fear the night before that my waters were going to break while I was giving my talk and I go into labour like seriously Tolu get a grip but <laughs> at the time that is literally the kind of mad thoughts that were going through my head I was thinking all the worst case scenarios but then my friend is telling me actually why don't you think of the opposite like all the positive things that can come from this event as opposed to focusing on all the worst case scenarios you can choose what to think about you can either focus on the negative or focus on the positive and I did try as much as those negative thoughts kept coming I kept trying to counteract them with a positive alternative the first thing I want to talk about is the timing of Black Girl Finance Festival. Selena intentionally put the festival on during the week of International Women's Day, which is a week to kind of celebrate womanhood. But the actual theme for International Women's Day this year is leading with equity. And I remember when I heard the theme initially, I didn't really get the difference, to be honest, between equality and equity, and I just had to do a little bit of further research. When I was able to research and delve further into what it means, I'll explain now for the purpose of those of you that haven't had the chance to look at it or don't quite know what the theme of this year's International Day is, it's basically leading with equity is about taking a step further than equality so when you think of equality you think everything needs to be fair so if I get one biscuit you get one biscuit and I remember seeing a beautiful illustration which captured the difference between the two very well if I find it I'll insert it but if I can't find it I'm going to try and explain it for you so you can kind of use your imagination and visualize it but in the picture it had three different people standing next to a fence trying to watch a football match so they're standing by the fence so let's say the fence is here they're trying to see over the fence so they're behind the fence trying to see what's happening on the other side so what ended up happening is equality said all of you need to see over the fence so I'm going to give you all a box each so that you can stand on the box and see over the fence and it all had the same exact size box but the issue was that they were all three different heights so you had like a, let's say a dad a, a son and then a younger son all of them their heights are descending like that and they all have the same size box which they're standing on so that's equality because they've all been given the same platform to stand on to see over the fence but then what you quickly realize from that illustration is that it's still not helping solve the issue for all three of them the one that's the smallest the most disadvantaged is still unable to see over the fence so equity is where you give people what they need to thrive so that they can all be at the same level playing field so rather than giving them three boxes of the same size which is equal you're going to give them three boxes at varying height which will help them all to see over the same fence at the same level hopefully i've explained that in a way that makes a bit of sense to you but yeah that just made me think more about the importance of this black girl finance festival because yes as women we do have our disadvantages here in the uk when you add ethnicity into it there's different disadvantages that we also face which as much as no one wants to feel like a victim or be positioned as a victim we can't 
ignore the reality of what it's like being a black woman trying to make it in the corporate world in the UK. I think events like Black Girl Finance Festival are crucial in that yes, all women need to learn about money, all women need to be empowered to master their finances, but my problem may not be your problem. So I need a little bit more help, a little bit more tailoring of the solution to kind of help me get to the same level playing field as maybe my white female counterpart, if that makes any sense at all. Spaces like Black Girl Finance are crucial for helping to close that, that gap so that we can all kind of end up at the same place because we're given the additional tools we need to make sure we all end up on the same level playing field. Another thing I took away from the Black Girl Finance was just real inspiration. Like, like I mentioned earlier on in this video, the fact that I attended a Black Girl Finance event back in 2020 and then attended the event or spoke at the event a few days ago, just seeing how far the Black Girl Finance brand has come over the last three years is absolutely exceptional. And it's kind of given a great blueprint to what is achievable within this space. So the fact that Selena started off, you know, putting in a small event for a group of like 10, 15 women and it's now gone on to become a whole big brand that has its own book, that has its own platform, that serves thousands of women worldwide, that now has a whole festival in person and online. Like, it's just proof that anything is possible. Like, you have to just take that first step because I know when Selena first set out on this journey, she did not anticipate where the brand would be today. But if you don't move, nothing's gonna happen. Like you have to take that initial first step. You have to believe in yourself, back yourself and keep pressing forward. And just seeing her do that is a lot of inspiration to me and other women, other black women as well, to show what is possible. I really took from the event that nothing is impossible and there is just so much opportunity out there for the taking. You just have to put in the work and make it happen for yourself. Another thing that this event really brought home is the fact that your network really is your net worth. And it's not just about what you know, it's about who you know, and you need to kind of step outside your comfort zone, put yourself out there and get yourself into rooms that you wouldn't normally be in. And I say that because again, going back to the Black Girl Finance Festival, just that decision that I made all those years ago to go to that initial event made me connect with Selena. And from then we was able to build a better relationship. And when she now did her event, she was able to invite me to speak at her event. And I've spoken at a few of her events online. I've also been able to get coaching clients through the podcast interview that I did with her a while ago. And all of this wouldn't have happened if I hadn't gone to that initial event and networked and started speaking to people that are not within my normal sphere. And I can say that for so many other people as well in the personal finance space that I've connected with over the years, opportunities have come just from the network, from the speaking to different people, from people saying, oh, Tolly does this, um, I'll put you in contact with her. And likewise, I've done the same for other people. So it just goes to show that your network really is your net worth and you should definitely prioritize expanding your network to get around like-minded people that are where you wanna go or even ahead of where you wanna go so they can kind of pull you along and bring you along on that journey. Another thing I took away from the event is the fact that this money message is so important and so many people still need to hear it because I've been creating content now in the finance space online since what, end of, well, I've had my blog since 2019 and I've been on YouTube since the beginning of 2020. And I feel like I've made so many videos on budgeting, saving, paying down debt, etc. And I felt like I've just, you know, exhausted the topic. I've been banging on about it for so long. Everybody's heard, it's okay, Tolu, it's enough. But actually, just from the feedback from the event, I quickly realized that no, there's still work to be done. People still need to hear this money message. For some people, they've heard it before, but they need that reminder, they need that extra push. For some people, they actually haven't heard this conversation before they haven't been told about the dangers of getting themselves into unnecessary consumer debt they haven't been told about the importance of budgeting they haven't been shown how to do these things it's easy to just assume that everybody knows it now because of the community you've built around yourself but actually beyond the community I built around myself, there's still so many more people to touch with this money message and there's still so many people that need help on their financial journey. So it just really brought home to me the importance of this content and the importance of continuing to show up and share this important money message and not to take it for granted, this platform that I have and the impact that it can have on other people's lives because it is so important and people really do need help when it comes to the management of their money. And I think sometimes it's easy to forget that when you've been doing it for a long time, you just think, you know, by now, I'm just saying the same thing over and over again, but no, there's just still so much work to be done.
The final point that I'm going to leave you with in terms of lessons I learned from Black Girl Finance Festival is the importance of going at it together. Like, there's so much more power and strength in numbers than trying to do everything for yourself. So when I look at Black Girl Finance Festivals, a lot of the topics that Selena had speakers come and talk about were topics she could have, in theory, spoken about herself. She didn't need to give a platform to over 20 women to come and talk about all these different money topics, to come and do panels, even having other authors come come to the event to um, promote their book and sell their personal finance books. She didn't need to do all of that. She could have just, you know, she's got a, built a platform on her own. She's got an event that she's doing successfully on her own. She's got her book, you know, she's got enough credibility on her own to put on an event herself and still attract a crowd. Yet she chose to give that platform to all these other black women. And I thought that was just so incredible. And it just shows the strength in doing that because the women in that attended the event were able to get so much more out of it because yes, like I said, she's an expert in her field. So Selena knows a lot about a lot of topics, but her story is not my story. My story is not Verena's story, etc., etc. So you've got all these different people that are coming at personal finances from different personal perspectives, but also equally from different areas of expertise. So they could bring an angle to it that maybe Selena wouldn't have been able to do. So in the end, everybody's winning. Everybody that attended the event was able to to get so much more value out of the day because so many of us came together for that event. But anyway, that's enough of me ranting along about how amazing this event was. I just really wanted to come on here to give you a good summary of the event and what I took away from it because yeah, I just, I did a lot of reflecting after the event and I thought, let me share my thoughts with you guys. But that is it for today's video. If you made it this far, again, you're a real one. Thank you, I appreciate you. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you're yet to do so. Subscribe if you haven't yet subscribed tell a friend to tell a friend and I will see you soon for another video thanks for watching bye